All right, kids, today I want to address a problem I see a lot of you struggle with when first learning about circular motion and centripetal forces. You see, if you have a single force causing an object to go in a circle, maybe something like gravity causing a satellite to orbit the Earth, the setup of the problem is typically pretty easy. You see, here you'd set the force by gravity equal to the centripetal force, and then you'd solve for whatever it is your teacher or your homework are demanding of you. But where people get stuck is when there's multiple forces acting on an object that's going through circular motion. In introductory physics, this usually comes up when we make some object move in a vertical circle. So typically that'd be a car, or an airplane, or a roller coaster, or my favorite, a bucket full of water, mostly because that makes a pretty good demo in class. Now these are all really just the same problem dressed up differently over and over again. You see, in all these problems, there's really just the same three forces acting on each object. There's the centripetal force, gravity, and the normal force. But where people get stuck is in how to set up the math relating those three forces to one another. Now, your average hardworking kid is going to start working problems like this and start making rules to memorize. Rules like gravity and the normal force are always going to have the opposing signs. But what gets frustrating for a lot of people, which is probably why you're watching this video, is that the rule will work for objects, say, on one side of the circle, but suddenly not at the other end of the circle. For example, gravity and the normal force are in opposite directions and therefore have opposite signs down here at the bottom of this loop. But if we stick a roller coaster up here on the top of the loop, they're both in the same direction, so they have the same sign. But for a car at the top of this loop that is going over the top of a hill, suddenly they again have opposite signs. So I want you to throw out most of the rules we've tried to memorize from doing problems like this. And I want to show you the only two things that you really need to know in order to set up the math for a problem that you may run into. The first is centripetal force is not a force which is actually acting on an object. If you were to draw a free body diagram for a roller coaster cart, you would never actually show a centripetal force on that free body diagram. You see what gets lost in all of centripetal force is that the centripetal force is the net force on an object. It is the result of forces acting on an object. It is not the actual force acting on an object. And that means we're always going to be setting the centripetal force equal to the forces that are acting on some object going in a circle. The next thing you need to know is we're always going to say that inward toward the center of the circle is the positive direction. Now you might be used to saying that up is positive and down is negative, probably from something like a kinematics unit. But here we need to say that anything acting inward is positive and any force acting outward is in the negative direction. So in all these problems that we're dealing with, whether it's the car or the roller coaster or the airplane or the bucket of water, we're going to say that the centripetal force is equal to the normal force and gravity or the weight of the object. And the issue that we have to figure out and make situational, and that's going to take a little bit of thinking, is whether or not these normal and gravity terms are positive or negative. So for example, let's look at the roller coaster cart going around this loop here. You see down at the bottom here, there's gravity acting downward on the cart and the normal force from the track holding the cart up. So in this case down here, we'd say the centripetal force is equal to the normal force, which is going to be positive because it's upward, minus the force by gravity. That force by gravity is negative, not because it's down, but because it's outward, away from the center of the circle. Now, moving this card up to the top of the circle, we have a different situation. You see, at the top of the circle, provided the roller coaster cart is going quickly or fast enough for the people to not fall out of the cart, because for some reason in physics, roller coaster carts don't have seatbelts. I don't know why. But at the top of this loop here, the centripetal force is going to be equal to the normal force, which in this case is downward. So we're going to say that's positive because it's inward toward the center of the circle. Plus, because again, it's downward toward the center of the circle, the force by gravity. And you can see from the top to the bottom of the circle, these two equations are completely different. And so what happens is when you try to memorize these sort of trends in signs between Fn and mg, you want to be in right in one spot and wrong in another. Now to look at a slightly different example, let's look at the car going over the top of a hill here. See, as the car goes over the top of a hill, there's the force by gravity downward and the normal force holding the car up. 
So if the center of the circle is down here, that force by gravity is going to be downward toward the center of the circle in the positive direction. And the normal force upward is going to be in the negative direction. And I know that's different from what we saw with the roller coaster going in a loop. But again, with a roller coaster, the cart was on the inside of the track at the top of the loop. Whereas for our car going over the top of a hill, the car is on the outside of the loop. And that changes the direction of the normal force. Now, obviously, I'm not solving any of these circular motion problems here as we run through this. Uh, but I'm just showing you how to set up the math behind each of these problems. So hopefully this has helped you in working through what I'm guessing is your homework that you're struggling with. On that note, that's all for now.